Hello, this is Roland Jung again from Ebank Canada. I wanted to show you something that really comes up very often, automation. Automation you can even see here, Ebon has won the Automation Award in 2020 for its eView, its cloud, all kinds of different things actually in, that can be understood under automation. Uh, what I often see as un automation is this portion here, the added value we have with Rital together and ePlan. When you combine both of them together, we often talk about automation during the engineering, the sourcing, uh, here, engineering, sourcing, supply, and manufacturing. Now, today I'm going to focus on <coughs> engineering. I'm going to show you inside ePlan how I can do my engineering. You can see here this small project. This is a startup project. And I will show you how I can use a configurator called Cogineer or eBuild if you actually go on the web and how you can actually build some schematics. Now, for instance, here I have a distribution page, type A, type B. I can choose a few different variables. I can say I'm going to put this under um, higher level function power, location A1, documentation type E, page one, and I can just hit the generate button. Now I'm going to generate right away a second one under panel number two, A2 here on page two. I'm going to choose the type A. I'm going to choose a different variant. Now, this, of course, generated two different pages. One was my type S, the other one was my type A. So two different variants with a few different questions. Let's assume that on this first panel here, I'm gonna add a series of motors. I'm gonna attach these motors to, let's say, three of those motors. I'm gonna choose a three horsepower. I'm gonna say this is on my conveyor number one. It's going to be attached to my panel number one. I'm going to page start the counters at 10 for conveyor. Well, why not 10? And it's going to match a little bit. And here we go. We just generate. Now this, of course, behind the scene generated a page 10 here with a few pages. And if we actually check it out, we even have cross references that bring us back to the previous page that we just generated. <coughs> Every one of these components has behind the scene a part number. That part number, which could be selected through the configurator or some of these parts actually that came in manually, are all now saved inside this project. Now very rapidly, and this is the automation built into ePlan, we can run Wire numbering. Wire numbering is a simple thing in ePlan. It's basically just something that you do in the background. You don't even really touch the wires themselves. They automatically number. So based on the row number here, that is your starting row number, I can have my wire numbers. Everything is set automatically. Now, as I said, now I have my wires. I have my bill of material. I can now generate a whole bunch of reports, bill of material, cable diagram, terminal diagram, etc. And they all get generated in one single click. You will see it, observe on the left hand side, you will see some additional sections that just came in. BOM is my bill of material. Okay. Now, this bill of material, if you need it outside of ePlan, it's really easy. You can just take this export your manufacturing data here, dump it out, apply to the entire project, and you can get out that data in a different format, Excel in this case here, to actually share with your supply chain. And they can then order these parts automatically. So no one really has to interact. All the quantities here, all the part numbers are directly coming from your schematics, directly coming from here. We were talking about wires. Now, wires can actually be seen here already. If you want to prefabricate some wires, I don't have the length yet, so I can only prefabricate the wire labels. This is also something that gets generated automatically. 
If you click here on the marking tool from Phoenix Contact, it will take the information that we have in our schematics and simply dump it out so you can print the labels. And this fully automatic. So I chose a specific format where my wire number, my source and target are actually printed on the same label. This is an interesting trick I learned in Germany. I think Volkswagen does that. They actually use the source and target so that you can actually see from where to where each wire goes. And we have the nice wire number that I added on top of it. Uh, this is something that we do here in North America, so I don't need to update this. Let's go and check out the wire numbers. Here it goes. You can see every single wire out of this project is now generated. And you can see whether you are on the same panel, whether you go from one panel to another. A lot of information is actually here. And all you have to do now is feed the printer. In this case here, I chose a Phoenix Contact label printer, but I could have chosen, of course, something else. Now, this is all nice and dandy, but someone has to place these components in a layout. Here is such a layout, and I'm doing this in 3D. So here is a small panel I have. In this panel here, I'm going to work on the front side, and I will see, and here, oh, I don't have the dialog I wish to use. I'm just going to switch it over here to my general workspace or arrangement of my windows, if you wish to, where all my dialogs actually pop up in the right place. And here we do have all the components that can be placed on this A1. And you can see they are actually placed already. <coughs> they will have a checkbox. You will see if I take one of these devices and I try to place them, of course, it places on the outside of the box. Let me just prepare the view very quickly. I will go not only show all, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the inside of the panel and more precisely on the front view here. And I'm going to try again. So I'm going to take this circuit breaker. Now I can drag them one by one if I want to and just place them there. That's one option. I could, of course, also take a few of them all together. And this, if there is a macro attached to that particular um, specific uh, item, it will actually show up. And not only like uh, what we see here, a rectangle will be placed or, or, or a cube, but the exact component with the naming convention. Of course, boom, 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 placing them one next to each other like this. I was hoping for it to actually do the whole thing, but this was an accessory that was actually placed here. And there we will see that everything is now placed next to each other. I'm not sure if everything fits on here, but we can see that uh, it actually does uh, place it um, like this. So what I you can do also is you can go here with the unplaced parts, which basically eliminates the parts that weren't placed yet. And you can just pick now these parts and have them placed one <coughs> next to each other very quickly. And this goes actually a little bit faster. I'm going to show you the same trick with the terminals and uh, the rest of the components. You can see as they are placed now, these components are actually disappearing here from the left-hand side. So of course, I have a few relay relays. I'm going to pick these three relays uh, as it is. Hopefully, all three relays show up. And of course, they do. And I will just drag and drop this over and place the first one. And as I place the first one, the next one, the second one, the third one, they all place. Now you can see the, the game. All I have to do now is actually to go back here on this side and update the reports. And this will update all the reports one by one automatically. And I will now even get some specifically with the IKEA style, right? Where we have a cutting sheet, a panel modification drilling sheet and an assembly sheet all put together just based on this one thing here. You can see here, this is my cut sheet. So very quickly, you can see here, I can see what I need to cut in terms of ducts and rails. <coughs> I have a drilling sheet that actually tells me which holes I need. And I have an assembly sheet here 
that will actually show me where each device is to be placed like I did with the small bill of material and even uh, more information can be displayed here. All that gets generated. And finally, to actually talk about the eView, I can finally upload it here to eView by simply taking this project and boom, uploading it here into the eView and everyone else that I invite to can come and see it. So this eView that you see here is actually the bridge to all those people that do not have ePlan. This is, when we go back to our ePlan website here, why ePlan won the Automation Award. I hope this was a pleasant thing and you want to see a little bit more about ePlan because we have tons of more features that can help you in this value chain here, engineering, supply, and manufacturing. Of course, too short to show them all. This was Roland from ePlan. I hope you enjoyed.